This time I want to take this beautiful form on the left and I want to try and make it uh, <laughs> I want to try and make it usable. So the default, you can see what the browser has done is it's taken all of our form controls and it's just flowed them from left to right until it hits the edge of the window and then it wraps it. And this is this is terrible and this is the default. So you're always going to have to do a bunch of work to make these things usable with CSS. So what I'm going to try and do is make it look like this. Not to say this is the best looking form you could do, but it, I'm going to, it's going to give me a chance to show you how a bunch of things work. So let's, uh, let's start in on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the fonts. I've covered working with fonts in the past. In, um, I've got a couple of fonts already chosen from Google Fonts. I'm going to use Railway and Open Sans for my for my font. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna import these fonts into my page. So the first thing I need to do is I have to get a style sheet loaded. I've already created an empty style sheet called style.css, and I'm gonna link it here. So I'm gonna link relationship is equal to style sheet href is equal to style.css and the type is equal to text CSS. And now I'm going to jump over to my style sheet and I'm going to grab these. Now there's two ways to import things into CSS. You can do, you can, I could import this as another link in my style sheet, but let's look at another way. Let's use an import. So I'm going to grab the import line and I'm going to paste, so these are, this is the Google web fonts. I'll paste them in like this and it's going to import this style sheet from Google and it's going to pull in the Open Sans font and it's also going to pull in the Railway font. So when I want to use these, Google's given me a couple of lines here that I can use and let's just throw this down here for now so that we can remember how to do it when we want to put this in. Okay. So let's make use of let's make use of this in our form. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up and I'm going to change I'm going to change all of my elements in the whole page so they use um, something called box sizing border box. And what I'm doing here is I want to make sure that all of the elements in the page, um, their content, their padding, their borders, etc., they're all taken into account when we calculate the width and the height, rather than having them add on the um, the outer part portions of it, like the padding and so on, and the border to the size. So this is going to make styling our um, our controls a little bit easier when you're doing form form controls. All right, so step one, let's start with the body and let's uh, throw a little bit of padding on the body, uh, 1EM of padding, and let's set the font family, font family, let's use our open sans and we'll fall back to sans serif if it's not available. Okay, so right away everything looks looks different. Um, we've got, let's reload this. So we've got extra space here and I'm going to open up my dev tools. And today I'm working in Firefox. I wanted to tr try using a different browser to show you. I, when I'm developing, I use all different browsers and I jump around between them. For the work that I'm going to be doing today, Firefox is particularly good because I'm going to use CSS Grid and it has a fantastic grid um, developer tool set. So we'll, we'll come back to that. So I've got some nice padding on the body. You can see here's the body and you can see if I select the body that I've got some padding around the edges, right? So it's giving me extra room. You can see the fonts have changed. Uh, my font family here is Open Sans, which is great. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to style this form. So my form element is a container for everything that's going on in my form. So let's do the outside portion of this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to push the um, the form down a little bit from the rest of the content in the page so that there's extra space here at the top, margin on the top, 3 EM. 
let's add some general padding to the whole thing to push it in. So I've got space at the top and I'm pushing it in further on the sides and the top so that I have just more room to breathe. And let's throw a border around the whole thing. So one pixel solid and I'll just use black. So now I have a box around, around this and that looks pretty good. Okay, so what can we do next? Um, let's deal with how this thing expands. So I want to be careful that it doesn't get, so let's just, let's just check this out. If I expand this, you can see that it's going to go forever. So it's always going to be as wide as possible because I haven't told it not to do that. And it's always going to be as narrow as possible. So if I kept going to the left, it's going to get narrower and narrower. So let's, um, let's fix that so that we don't have these problems. So let's set a max width of, let's say 800 pixels, and let's set a minimum width of 400 pixels. So now if I expand this out, you can see that I'm not changing the size of this. I can go, I can go smaller. You can see how it's going smaller but it's not going to go larger than 800 pixels. Now, the 800 pixels was arbitrary. You could you could play with that number, but I'm going to set it so that there's these two these two sizes that it can it can go between, but it can't go more than that. Now, one of the things that I don't like here is that if the window is wider, it's always staying over here on the left. So what I want to do is I want to have it automatically manage the margin on the left and the margin on the right so that this thing gets centered. So I'm not going to tell it to center it. I'm just going to tell it to do to do that via the margin. So I'm going to say, make sure that the margin on the left is automatically managed for us and the margin on the right, same thing. Save that. And now if I expand this, you can see that it stays the same size, but the margin on the left and the right does what I want. So that's looking good. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this form container and I'm going to turn it into a grid. So we've been working with Flexbox and Flexbox is great when you want to have flexible spacing of elements in a row or in columns. But what we want to do here is I want to create this almost like a table. I want to have it so that there's a place for these uh, labels to go, a place for these input elements to go and I want to set it up in more of a grid format. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say just like we did with Flexbox. So with Flexbox we would do display flex, right? But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to say display grid. So I want the form to be a grid and I'm going to specify the the layout that I want for the columns in my grid. So I'm going to say I want the grid template for the columns to be equal to the following. So I want to have, basically what I want to have is I want to have one, two columns, but you don't specify it like this. What you do is you, you specify the sizes of the columns. So you could say something like 200 pixels, 200 pixels. But what I, what I don't like about that is that it's going to mean that depending on which size I'm at, like if I'm at the maximum size or the minimum size, these numbers aren't going to make sense. So I have to use something that the browser can use as like a ratio. So I'm going to use what we in um, CSS Grid we call fractional units. So I'm going to say the first column here I want to be one fractional unit and the second I want to be three fractional units. Okay, so imagine it's chopped up into four and this is what I'm going to work with. So I'm going to say one fractional unit for the first column, three fractional units for, for the next. And let's save that and just see how it looks. Okay, so if I were to uh, look at the form, let me find the form. Here's the form. And, oh, I got to spell grid properly. Here we go. Okay, here's how it looks right now. So I'm going to turn on in the um, inspector in Firefox, I'm going to turn on the grid overlay here, and you can now see how the grid is laid out. So basically what it's done is it's made a grid, 
and I have one fractional unit and I have three fractional units over here. Now as this thing expands, you can see that it will expand or contract, but it's going to be smart about how it does it. So it's going to, it's kind of like Flexbox, but it's, it's giving me a more uh, it's giving me a more structured way to do these rows and columns, which is a little, you can do this kind of thing in Flexbox, but it's not really designed for that. It's easier to do it in using CSS Grid. Okay, so what can we do to improve this? Well, one thing I would like to do, I don't like how tight everything is here. So I'm going to specify in my grid that I want to put a, I want to put a, a gap. I want a grid gap of let's say 20 pixels. And again, I need to spell correctly. So I'm going to put a gap in here and now you can see that I have, let me turn this off so you can see what it looks like without it. So there's what it looks like without. Here's what the grid looks like. So I now have these gaps between and if you thought that was too much, you could reduce it. You could say 10 pixels and you know, so I think that's, I think that's not enough. How's 15? Yeah, maybe. So we can play with this. I'll leave it at 20 for now because I know I want to make font sizes larger. So this is this is starting to look good. I'm going to turn on my my grid again so we can see what's going on. Now another thing to notice what what's happened here with the way that it's placed my items. If we go back to the HTML, so my form, everything inside my form is being laid out in grid. And what it's doing is it's doing a row with two columns and then another row with two columns, etc. So each one of these is a grid cell. So this cell right here, row one, column one, what it does is it takes the very first element that's inside the form and it puts it there. And then it takes the second element, this one here, and it puts it here. And the third element here is the label for this. So it's laying everything out element by element by element. And if we wanted to put a bunch of elements inside something, what we could do is we could, like for example, if I wanted both of these to be together inside one element, what I could do is I could wrap this in a div and it would become one element instead of, instead of two, right? I'm not gonna do that, but that's the concept of what, this is how it's laying things out. So I'm not specifying where to put things in the grid, it's just automatically filling them in. There are ways with CSS grid for you to name these or to specify, I want this thing placed inside this very specific, this very specific area, or I wanna change the way it works. I'm gonna do a little bit of that in a minute, so we'll come back to that. Uh, what else could we do in here? I, I think I'd like to center the items in here. So see how these are on to the left? Let's just change that. So I'm going to say that I want to align the items so that they are in the center. And now let's refresh this and let's turn on my grid here. And you can see that it's done. Like you can see how this now is centered up and down, right? These ones are like the same height, so you're not getting the sense of it, but okay, so let's keep going. So we've got our form. What else could we change? Well, let's change all these labels. So I want to target every label inside of my form. So form label. And what could we do? Well, we could change the font family. Let's change it to the other font like so, and we get just a slightly different font for each one of these. And we could change the font size. Let's say we want to make it bigger. Like that, you might say, oh, that's too big. We could do 1.3, okay? So we specify a font size for these, for all these labels. Let's do something similar for all of our input controls. So I want to select all of these input controls. So I'm going to say input controls. And I also want to include my text area. So I want to do I want to do a couple of things to these. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that they're all occupying as much width as possible. So we're going to say use 100% of the width. I am going to specify that I want them to have some padding. So you'll notice right now if I type in here there isn't a lot of space around the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's add some padding and we won't, we don't want a lot, but let's do 
um, a little bit of padding. So let's just try this. If I, you can see I've got a little bit more space. Let's refresh this again. I've got a little bit more space around the outside. You could make that even larger if you want to. So we could say, let's let's try, I think this will be too much. Um, you could play with it and see what you think, but you can see how it just, it gives you more room to breathe. And when you're trying to read what's in there, it's a little bit easier to work with it. Let's blow the font size up. So font size 1.5 EM. Now this is probably too much space around the outside because I've made the font bigger. So let's go back down to, let's say three, like we were trying a minute ago. Yeah. Okay. So again, you can play with, Play with these sizes and get them so that they feel like they're good for you. Um, what else could we do here? So with padding, font size, uh, let's change the border. So let's put the border as one pixel solid, but let's use uh, a different color, 206, 212, 218, and just a lighter color around the outside of these. So we have kind of a light gray around the outside. That's interesting. And if you wanted to, you could round, uh, round out the corners on these. So you could say, I want to have border radius of 0 0.25 EM. And what you'll see is these boxed corners will just get rounded. So I don't know if you like that or not, but it's, it's, some, it's a look you could do, right? If you wanted to have, have those. I don't think I'm going to use it. Uh, let's take it off, but I've shown you how to do it. So I'll leave this, I'll leave this um, with a more boxy look. Okay, so let's do something else. Let's change it so that when you click on these, they look different. So when you're, when you're on this element here, when you're highlighted around this, I want it to change the color of the border, for example, or change the background or any of those kinds of things. So what we want to do is we want to say that when the input elements have the focus or when a text area has the focus we want to apply an outline to it and let's say we want to do like two pixels of solid and let's just pick a light sky blue So if I click here, you can see I get this light blue line around the outside. And if I go down to the next one, you can see where I am. So as my cursor moves, I have this outline around the outside of whatever it is that I'm clicking on, making it a little bit easier to see where I'm typing. Okay. Um, some places will do like, you know, background color. I don't think this is what you want to do, but let's just try it. So we go here, you know, you could do something like that, right? Where if you wanted to specify, I'm now typing in this box. So anyway, you can play around with what happens when these controls have the focus. Uh, what else, what else can we do here? Um, Another thing that I want to do is I want to I want to fix this text area. So what's going on right here is no good. So let's have a look at our grid again. You can see that the text area has been put inside of it starts at 1. So one thing to note about the way that CSS grid works is that we would probably refer to this as the first column and we were, would refer to this as the second column. But the way that the way that it works in CSS Grid is you talk about these grid borders, the edges here. So what you're going to do is you're going to say this is one at the very left edge, and then two, and then three. So what we're talking about here is right now this uh, text area goes from one to two, and what I really want it to do is I want it to start at one, and I want it to go all the way over to three. So I want it to needs to occupy grid column and I'm going to say start at one finish at three so go from one to three all the way across save this so now it looks like this so that's looking a lot better okay we this thing's occupying the right amount of space okay so what else can we what else can we fix 
Okay, so we've got a problem with these buttons. What I want, I'll just show you what I'm looking for here. I want these buttons to be over here on the right hand side like this. And this is not this is not what I want. So you can see what it's done is it's put the first button inside the first one FR column and then it's put the second one in the three FR column and it stretches it out so it fills the whole thing. So what I want to do is I want to put both of these buttons inside of this uh, second column. So if we go back to our CSS, uh, I'm going to clean this up before I mess up my HTML. So what I want to do is I want to go down and I want to work with these buttons a little bit. I want to treat these two buttons as if they're one thing. So I'm going to do that by wrapping them in a div. So I'm going to say that these are my um, class equal buttons. This is my buttons div and I am going to treat it separately. So what I want to do is, let's save this, I want it to put them together. So you can see that it's put them together. It hasn't done what I wanted, right? It's got, they're stacked on top of each other, which is not what I want, but we're getting closer. Okay, so let's let's deal with the buttons, the buttons in our CSS. So I want to say that my buttons class, the grid column is going to be, if we look at this again, let's think about where we want it to go. We want it to go f starting at two over to three. We want it to go from two to three instead of from one to two. So we're gonna say start at two and end at three. So now it's put them over here. That's good. Uh, we still need to clean them up, but it's done, it's done more of what we want to do here. And let's, let's actually fix these a little bit. So I'm gonna specify, um, the input controls, so these are both input controls. I have two input controls. If we go back to the um, HTML, you can see that I have a submit and I have a reset. So what I wanna do in CSS is I wanna say, I need to select the inputs, but I don't want all the inputs. I want the inputs whose type are equal to submit and the input that has a type equal to reset. So in CSS, this is how I would do, this is a selector for, um, this is a selector for being able to say, I wanna grab an input element, but only with an attribute that's equal to this value. Okay, so what can we do? First thing I wanna do is I wanna change the size of these buttons, because this is massive what it's doing. So let's say that the width is equal to 150 pixels. Let's try that. That's better, 150 pixels. And what else can we do? Let's change the background color to be um, blue, let's say. That's gonna be too harsh. Um, RGB 0, 123, 255. Let's do the color of the text to be white. That looks better. Now the only thing we need to do is we need to bump everything over to the right. So what I need to do, if we just play with this for a second, so these these two buttons exist inside of a div, this div right here. So what I would like to do uh, with this is probably I wanna take the text and align everything inside this to the center? No, to the end, yeah. So we could say, put everything off to the end of this thing. Um, or you could say, put it over to the right, right? They'll both do the same thing in this case. So let's do that. So let's say that our buttons needs to use text align right. Save that and let's see what that looks like. Nice, that looks good. Um, okay, so let's do one more thing. I would love to have it so that, so I, I don't know if you can see on this one, when I hover over my buttons, like so, you can see that they change color. So it's, you know that you're on top of this button. So let's, let's do some of that. So I'm gonna do something similar to the above. I'm gonna say input type equals submit when you hover this or when it's got the focus, if you're using keyboard navigation, 
and I want to do the same thing for reset. Hover and focus. Let's change the background color to be, um, I don't know, let's just go, let's, let's try this darker blue. This isn't going to be right, but it'll give us a sense. So when you go, if I click on here and I hover over these, you can see that it changes. So there's a lot of things we could do, like we could just change the border if you wanted to. You could say when the user hovers over it, set the border equal to this or change the color or whatever. You can do lots of different things, but giving you a way to say I'm on top of this top of this this particular button right now. Okay? So this is good. We've produced a much more usable form and we wrote our own style sheet in order to do it. So in the next video, what I want to do is I want to show you how we could build this so that it would work for any size, uh, mobile devices, tablets, laptops. And also, instead of writing our own CSS, I'm going to use third-party CSS to make that possible. I'm going to use Bootstrap. So we'll see you in a minute.